Hello everyone, welcome back to my immigration series. This is video number two. We're going to look at the occupations that qualify for you to move to Australia as a skilled migrant. So I'm going to walk you through the skilled occupation list and visa types. In this immigration series, we're going to do every step right from checking your eligibility until you file your final uh, visa application and come to Australia all by yourself without the need for an agency. If you have the time, if you have the patience, if you have the interest, you can definitely do it. It's achievable. Most of us just fear that we don't know. So I'm here to walk you through the entire process step by step at your own pace. So if you have any questions, make sure to leave in the comments below. And if you have not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification on so you'll be instantly notified of my new videos when I post them online. Okay, so let's jump into today's video without much delay. So this I covered in my last video. So quickly, I want to go through this. If you're looking at this video for the very first time, you have to understand the entire duration of the cycle. It's not going to be a short term process. So it's a one year investment of time, which will take. So make sure you know it. You have to browse and gather as much information as you can for, through YouTube or Google, or there are so many different forums where you can network with people and ask information. And please do not compare your case with anyone. If something has not worked for someone else, it doesn't mean it will not work for you. And always be honest, all the fake documents, fake IELTS certificates, or any fake work experience certificate will definitely not help you to live a life in Australia. So make sure you're being honest. So last uh, in the immigration series number one, we have checked the eligibility check. So if you've not checked that video, please go back and mm, check them. I'll leave it in the description. Uh, I've also had a separate playlist for that. So you can go through the entire series in a separate playlist. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to do the skilled occupation list check and how we can basically go ahead and understand um, what are the occupations that are eligible. And every year in June or July, usually, they will update the skilled occupation list. But this year, 2020, with Corona, I'm not sure if this is a priority because they're not going to take any skilled migrants till 2020. And I'm not sure if the states are even ready to give the invitations as yet. So this year might be different, but pretty much every year in July, you get new occupation list for that particular year. And that's when, you know, if your occupation is capped, say, for example, there are only uh, 10,000 uh, marketing specialist role, which was given and it was filled. So they will basically cap that particular occupation. So you will wait for the next year for them to open up. OK, so university lecturer. So I migrated as a university lecturer after 2016. I think only recently in few states they've opened up that particular position for three years. I could not find that position on the skilled occupation list. So always it's good to set some reminders in the newsletter so you're no notified if there's any change in the skilled occupation list. Now let's jump on to Google and check how you can do this assessment by yourself. So just go to Google and type skilled occupation list Australia 2020. Okay. And you'll get that as your first hit. So if you open up that, there'll be heaps of information here. All I want you to do is just scroll down to the very bottom. So these are, if you already know which visa you're going to apply for, you can click on it and find out. But I want you all to just quickly browse the entire information. So there are totally 674 occupations that has been listed. The main key takeaway message that I want you to do is in other countries, the designation that is given to you might be really broad or might be different from what the Australian uh, skill assessment authorities call it. So initially, I thought I would come under biotechnology and applied and I got rejected in 2010 where I didn't have any information. So then I did a thorough research when I really wanted to move and then I found out it's university lecturer which was more suitable for my role, okay? So things like that. So what I want you to know is you will have the occupation here. 
And please note the ANSCO code. This is very, very important for you to um, finalize on a particular occupation. And here itself, you will know what are the visas that are eligible for this particular occupation. If a consultant is going to tell you you're eligible for 491 for this particular occupation, obviously, you know, you're not eligible because it's given straight up here. So based on the uh, occupation, you will know what are the visas you're eligible for and what is the list that it is coming under. So basically, this is a short term skilled occupation list. This is regional occupation list. You will have M and so this is medium and long term. So usually medium and long term will have more uh, possibilities of getting a direct PR grant, which is your 189, 190 and your 485 and stuff like that. So you will have to go through every occupation you can search. You can use your search and find out what occupation or you can use your visas to find out what are the occupations which will be eligible for 491. So if I simply go like this and click, then probably I know there are 504 occupations that are eligible for 491 visa. So you can play around this and find out. Now, what I want you to do is just go to each of these ANSCO codes to find out what information you get here. And I'm going to give you some additional inputs on this one. You will also know which authority is your assessment authority. So VETESIS is usually more common for the professional ones. And then you've got CMBA, which is specific for acupuncture. And then you've got Engineers Australia for most of the engineering occupation. So it will take you to the um, you know, website and you have to just um, do your bit of research and understand um, what documents do you require and how much is it going to cost you. Everything is there. It's very transparent, straightforward procedure. So it all requires you a bit of time and effort. So if you go here, for example, so this is the ABS website, which will give you about a particular group. So let's go to something which is very common. Okay, so imagine, um, so I've got a separate thing called call or contact center manager. So if you're working in a call center, can you see there are two different options here? So team leader and manager. So let's look at both. So I can easily compare and tell you how things work here. So all I want you to do is go to the task and check whether you have been involved in this in the last three years. So that's what it's written here. So you either need a degree or diploma, um, at least three years of relevant experience, which may substitute for the formal qualification. Okay. So what are the occupations or the tasks that you should have done in the last three years? So the Basically, the reference letter that you get should reflect that you have worked in a call center and you've been liaising with other organizational units, service agents, customers. So it need not be the exact word, but it has to reflect that you have done most of these tasks, all of the tasks to be precise. But if you've done most of it, then probably you will have a positive skill assessment. OK, so if you go here in this uh, one, for example, contact center workers, you will see that you've got all these tasks. So if you have answered calls, if you have identified requirements and recorded information in that case, all these will come under call center team leader. Okay, so you have to read the responsibility to identify whether you will come as a call center worker or you'll come in as a call center manager. So this will be really, really handy for you to understand what is the skill occupation that you're eligible for and what are the requirements for you to get a positive assessment for this particular occupation and also the um, assessment authority. So this is where you will have all the information to find out about your occupation, about the different visas that are eligible under each occupation and the assessment. So we'll go under each in greater detail in the forthcoming days and weeks. So I'm going to tell you how to draft a um, recommendation letter for each occupation, like a template we will do it, and how to do a skill assessment. We'll look at a few examples as well. So if you're looking for these kind of information in Tamil, I've got a separate channel called Priya's Aussie Tamil Channel. And I'm also started a podcast, like I've revamped my English podcast to Tamil because there's more stuff that I would like to serve the um, Tamil audience. And then if you like this particular channel, make sure to hit the subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you all in the next video.